helped the Maharaja of the Sikh Empire with the reconstruction of the temple in Amritsar, the Golden Temple. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. And I'm Kevin Delp. Amritsar is a Mancala-like action selection game for one to four players that takes about one and a half hours to two hours to play. It's designed by David Harris Pino and published by Ludanova. Now the publisher provided us with this copy for review. In this video, we're going to give a brief overview of how the game plays, give some of our experiences, and discuss some of our likes and dislikes. The game comes with a main game board, player boards, cardboard tiles, and wooden components. Here's a quick overview of the game structure. The game plays over three decades with four rounds in each, so each player will take 12 turns during the game. After the third decade, there's final scoring and the player with the most points wins. On your turn, you have the opportunity to move your elephant, and then you choose one group of workers to move. You pick up the entire group and then move around the board, dropping one off in each of the sections you come to. The section where you drop your final worker determines which actions you can choose. You choose one of the three tiles and perform the main action. You can also perform the bonus action on the tile if it matches the color of the worker you used. If your elephant is also in the area where you dropped your last worker, you can take one more action. It could be one of the main actions in that area or one that is on your player board. Then all players can do a follow action. This is based on the color of the worker played by the active player. All other players can activate the tile on their player board in that color slot if they have one there. The goal is to get the most points, and there are several ways to do that. By donating to the temple, selling to the market, there are specific actions based on the bridge tile for that round, and activating some of the follow action tiles. At the end of each decade, there's a majority scoring for each side of the temple, and possibly some points could come from income. At the end of the game, you'll score the personal end game goal tiles that you've built, and the income track bonuses that you've unlocked by getting to the top of the track. Whoever has the most points is gonna win. So we said the overview was going to be brief, yep. and that was brief. <laughs> so let's jump into our experiences of the game. You have a limited number of turns, mm -hmm. so you really need to think through your options. I might wanna get resources, but I have a limited number of storage spots, especially at the beginning oh, of the yeah. game. And once I have the resources, what do I actually want to spend them on? Do I want to upgrade my player board or do I want to save them to make a donation to the temple? I might also want to save some to take advantage of a follow action if I think the other players are going to activate certain colors on their turns. Now for me, trying to figure out how to do the actions I want on my turn is part of the fun of this game. Usually you'll have to wait until your turn to make the decision because the other players are moving those mm -hmm. workers around the board. So you won't know how many workers will be in the different spots. This can create a little downtime <laughs> for the other players, yes. <laughs> but you have the follow action. So it does really keep you engaged in what other people are doing. In one game, I noticed that no one had Mahout tiles, those follow tiles in the yellow spot. Okay. So I built the storage tile that let me use white and yellow interchangeably. So I used yellow workers to activate the white tiles, which basically denied the other players a follow action. Also, when to build is a big part of the gameplay. Do you go after those Mahout spots first? Or do you want to build your warehouse up? Or do you want to get some end game goals, which have some immediate benefits? So that's kind of nice. All right, are we ready to go to our likes and dislikes? Maybe sure. dislikes first, get okay. them out of the way, right. and then end with the likes? <laughs> sure, we can start with uh, dislikes first. All right. My biggest dislike is the rule book. The graphic design is just, it's not good. I opened it up and I wanted to close it right away. The background is too busy, the text is too small, the important info is italicized, so it's even harder to see than the regular info. This does not look like it was designed in 2023 with modern programs. 
Now, I had the same issue with Sabika, mm -hmm. which was also um, by Ludanova. So they really need to work mm -hmm. on this aspect okay. if they want their games to be welcoming and easy to play. This game is not difficult. I agree. But I almost shelved it based purely on the presentation of the rulebook. My interest in the Mancala aspect of the game and the ability to watch a how to play video that mm. was already uploaded, yep. that overcame my abhorrence of the robot. Wow, uh, that's a pretty strong reaction for you, Melissa. <laughs> I know. <laughs> ah, the, the robot design obscures a fun, interesting game. Mm -hmm. I actually get a little annoyed and irritated every time I think about this rule book because there's no reason to make it harder for people to learn and enjoy a game. You're to make it easy, right? Right. Yeah. And there are tools, there are programs, there are professionals that can help with the design. No. Yeah, I, that's what I feel about the robot. I appreciate that. I had a little bit of a negative um, reaction when I saw the main game board initially. Uh, there's parts that seem like out of focus. Uh, they're not like clean and crisp, but I will admit after playing the game, that really didn't bother me because there's a lot of pieces on the board and all the art is just part of the background. But one thing that I don't like oh, okay. All right. <laughs> is that at the beginning of the game, players have to choose a different color to place their starting Mahout tile at the beginning, you know? Mm -hmm. And there are definitely certain colors that get activated more than others. I kept getting saddled with the yellow one, yeah. which doesn't get activated so if much. You, but if you think about it, in a four-player game, you could mm -hmm. be doing six actions each round. Three on your turn, possibly, and three more during other players' turns. So choosing the right actions on the right colors is, to me, paramount to this game. Yeah, I personally have struggled with not having a lot of follow actions since I didn't have tiles in the right colors at the right time. So I feel that. For gameplay dislikes, aside from the rule book, <laughs> I have two things. So normally I like games with personal goals, okay. but it's possible in this game that some players could have competing goals oh, okay. while yeah. other players don't. So, you know, Kevin and I are both trying to build in a certain section, potentially taking points away from each other, but the other players don't have any of that competition to worry about. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely happened in our last game. So. I needed to have a majority of donation cubes in the West, and you got a point for each cube mm -hmm. in that area in the West. So it's kind of like... We're yeah, both we're both going. And, and I just realized that the same player could get both of those gold tiles randomly. Ooh. So then... It could be super helpful. Yeah, they could maximize their points by going in the so one it's place. random. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I didn't like is how other players can swoop in and donate on the higher levels of the temple tiles after you've spent the time and resources to fill those foundational spots because yeah. you can't go up until it's all filled. Our friend Ben did that in multiple games. I know, which really stinks when you have the personal goal to build on the <laughs> highest level and it's finally available Yeah, and then he takes it. And it's not your turn like right away. Right. It's not like you can come and do it. I mean, I, well, there is like one Mahout tile that mm -hmm. might be able to get you that. Right. So I probably needed to swoop in on other right. people's. Or if you go up a track at the right time. Right. And you activate that one thing. So it's like highly unlikely. <laughs> so I, I probably did need to be more yeah. aware of yeah. what resources people had and where their elephants were since you can only donate in the section with your elephant. Mm -hmm. I wish you got points for reaching the top of the income tracks during the game instead of just at the end of the game. I I got there pretty quickly on one of the games on like multiple spots and I actually didn't know because I wasn't like... It was our the, first game. I think it was our first game. I was like, oh, I like got to this top of like two tracks at like the be middle of the second decade. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to get points not only the second decade, I'm going to get points at the end of the decade. But Melissa told me those are blue, blue sand, sand tires. Which I understand that's the rules, but I'm thinking, why not get rewarded for getting to them earlier? Well, but you do have the anytime you go up a track when you're already at the top, you get an immediate benefit. Okay, give me both. Give me both. 
Ooh. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't think I agree with that one. Right. But then I usually don't get to the top <laughs> early on. Um, so I think uh, now we should move on to the things we do like about Emerson. All right, I'm going to talk about the components and just like the table presence. Mm -hmm. It looks cool. Those elephants mm -hmm. are big and sure. chunky. They look cool as they're just sitting there. They're moving around the table. They're, it's not easy for you to knock them over. They got, mm -hmm. they're very he sturdy. hefty and sturdy. Um, it's cool that they can put the, the uh, cubes in them so mm -hmm. they have a use for the yes. for them, uh, the the box cover has got this like gold foil on mm -hmm. it. I think that's really cool. So generally mm -hmm. speaking, the table presence are the player boards inset. Mm -hmm. So the tiles fit on them. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. So all that is really really cool. So component wise, I think a home run. The workers are fine. I, we had like one chip on one of our workers, mm -hmm. but that was just our copy. But they're they're not the little meeples. I mean, they're, they're big. Yeah. So overall, that all works pretty well. Even the middle of the the building of the temple. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's more aesthetic. Oh, the little pieces that the you pieces, stack. Even like at the end of the game, you're putting the last piece on. Mm -hmm. It's like you're completing the temple. Like, I'm thinking to myself, it's nice, but it's not a need mm -hmm. to have. So, but it's cool. So yeah. overall. Two big thumbs up on the component quality and even just the general, like, things that are happening or mm -hmm. that are in the game. Okay. So, so uh, one of my likes for the game is just the, the decisions that you make. Where am I going to put the elephant? Mm -hmm. Because it determines where I can donate, but it also determines where I can take those bonus actions. So... I'm thinking about, oh, I really want to take this action over here, but I really need, in the north, but I really need to donate in the south. Am I going to give up one of those extra actions, or do I not care about donating there at this point in time? Another big decision is what to put onto your player board. Not only the decision of, am I doing the Mahout follow actions, or the storage, or the end game goals, but which ones? Because there are a lot of variety in the storage um, mm -hmm. aspects. So, you know, am I getting more spots? Am I trying to get a one-time bonus? Am I getting an ongoing action? There are lots of those Mahout tiles. Which ones do I put Not up gonna use there? them all in a given game. Right, yeah. there's only four-ish, four there's or five there's slots. There's only four, there's four colors. Four colors, yep. four slots. So <laughs> picking and choosing how to upgrade your board is very interesting to me, and it will vary from game to game depending on the setup and what's going on. Now, I like the ability to anticipate what other players might do. Like, will they let me activate a tile that's on my board so I can make a donation to the temple so I don't have to waste my actions when it's mm -hmm. my turn? Like. I'm really thinking about that kind of thing. I enjoy that because I'm like, I think Melissa's gonna want to take a this type of action that's gonna activate my white or or blue or whatever that has the tile that lets me donate. So I'm thinking, I can do other things on my turn, so I can you know progress in the game. And then she lets you know I my elephant's in the spot I want, so I'm just gonna be able to donate with the get make sure I have the resources, so I'm really good to go. Yeah, I, I struggle in that, the anticipation aspect of it. Um, what I do really like is the Mancala aspect ah, of yes. the game. So Five Tribes is one of my favorite games, especially um, older games. Yes, I, I would really call it love, classic at this point. Yeah, classic. Picking up the meeples and putting them different mm -hmm. places. So I was really intrigued when I heard that this also had a Mancala aspect. Yep. I do like that... Uh, there is some ways to mitigate uh, what happens because mm -hmm. you can spend coins to skip sections. Yep. So especially, if you have the coins, if you have the coins, uh, especially if you have, uh, if you're going later in the turn order, you don't know right. what's going to happen. Yep. So I, I like that aspect of it. I also like that there are some storage tiles that let you use different colors interchangeably. So oh. that gives you more um, Versa yeah, versatility. versatility. Yeah, That's the versatility. word I'm looking yeah, for. Versatility. It gives you more versatility. I will say that 
like five tribes and I think Kevin already mentioned it, you can get a little AP though trying mm -hmm. to plan everything out yeah. and you know not being able to look at the board state at the beginning of the round especially if you go later it's gonna change drastically yeah. by the time it gets to you I really like the different tracks there's four tracks that you're going Three, well, three income. Three income and one tax. <laughs> Check this. But there are four tracks you're going up. <laughs> One's not good. I like the other three. <laughs> um, they're all giving you benefits as you go up. Most of them are giving you immediate like things you're doing, like getting money, getting resources. The far left one is giving you sort of like actions that you're able to get. Like you're able to take a Mahout tile action at like mm -hmm. anyone that, that you have. So hopefully you're doing that at the right time. <laughs> like, There's some building. Yeah. I think one's a uh, free building. Yeah. So that's really cool. There are some where they have a little uh, sand timer and you don't get it when you move onto that spot, but you will get it at the end of the round if it's a gold one. Mm -hmm. For the, income. Not yeah. the blue ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I enjoy like games that have tracks. Mm -hmm. I think I'm always like, go up the tracks, at go Kevin, up the tracks. <laughs> the and, king of the tracks. <laughs> no, and um, usually if you're doing that, you're doing pretty well because you're getting a lot of stuff as you go up the tracks. This last game that we played, I focused a little bit too much on the tracks and not the actual gameplay because going up the tracks helps but in this game, you're trying to get points. Mm -hmm. So like getting points or going up the tracks may not get you more points. So you gotta just be aware of that. So <laughs> um, there is actually one of the Mahout tiles that lets you go up any track and that can be really powerful. Um, because it, it's a follow action that you- Yeah, it's a follow action. If you can put it in the right color and it gets activated throughout <laughs> the game. Because if you put it in the wrong color and it never gets activated, then it's kind of pointless. So that helped really on the first, really good for me on the first game. The second game, it didn't get activated as often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one is kind of expensive though That's because true. it increases your tax level by two and you have to pay those at the end of each decade. Yeah. So I, another thing that I like is the asymmetry. Mm -hmm. Asymmetry? Or, or asymmetry. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> anyway, as you are upgrading your board and placing different Mahout tiles and different storage tiles, you're basically div like going down divergent paths of strategies because of the way you have built your player board mm -hmm. and the different follow actions that you have decided to activate. So I like that it kind of everyone's maybe not doing the exact same thing because mm -hmm. they can get certain actions different ways or they get benefits by doing something else. So uh, kind of diversify. Yeah, I mean, it. there was one game I hardly knew my elephant. I didn't need to. I just was able to do things that I wanted to at the spot I was at the whole game. Yeah, and that was like because set up. Sometimes I, they're really good actions and right. then other times it's like, oh, I really want to take a build action here, but there's no resources there, mm -hmm. so it's hard to... Yeah. get them all together. But I built my, my game that way, so it was just like, mm -hmm. it worked out pretty good. All right, are we ready for final thoughts? Sure, final all thoughts. All right, final thoughts, Melissa, you go first. So this game was simpler than I anticipated from looking at that rule book. <laughs> Bringing it back <laughs> and, up and, again. And the components. <laughs> there are only a few main actions, and they're basically coded to a certain color. Mm. So like blue tiles are getting you resources and green tiles, you're building upgrades on your player board or you're activating mm. your Mahout tiles. Mm. The white tiles are going up the income tracks and then the yellow is letting you get money and perform market actions, which tends, I think, to get activated more later in the game, at uh, least our games. For our games, definitely, because you are you could mm -hmm. get a lot of points if you do it properly. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Yes, so trying to optimize your turns mm -hmm. is kind of the where the difficulty comes in mm -hmm. as you're trying to get as many actions or benefits as possible. So I, I personally, I enjoyed playing this game. Mm -hmm. It doesn't surpass five tribes for me. And we actually just played five tribes, so I can kind of compare like, them. Literally today, yes. we just played it. So we have <laughs> a really good comparison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so for the Moncala aspect, it doesn't surpass five tribes for me, but I would gladly play Amistrar if someone suggested Amritsar. it. Amritsar. I can speak. Sure. <laughs> um, but I definitely do recommend watching a how to play video to get the basics instead of struggling through the rulebook. After spending some time like really ruminating about what I thought about this game, <laughs> we, play, we play a lot of games. Mm -hmm. We play a lot of games. I decided this one's just okay. I, I think I would choose a lot of other games to play instead of this one. Like what I mean is, if someone says, Kevin, what do you want to play? And we 
you know, we play a lot of games, but we play a lot of new games, and there's sometimes there's new games you're like, I really want to play that one again. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like trying to like, there's not there's a lot to explore in this game, there is, but I just feel like it's good, it's okay. Like, but like you said, if someone asked you, do you want to play Amritsar? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, sure, it's fun. I, I would enjoy, I would enjoy playing it. So it probably won't be in my top 10 this year, but it may be in others, and I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah, well, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what's your favorite Mancala game, a game that uses the Mancala mechanism. Mancala. It's just pronunciation day. No, 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 no. I was saying the game they're going to choose. Oh, is Mancala. <laughs> it was my pronunciation again. <laughs> no, I'm just saying they're going to choose Mancala. Definitely put Mancala in the comments. Five times. <laughs>